What is going on guys, today I'm going to show you a material I showed previously in one of the weekends and basically this material a lot of you asked for me to show and what it does is it allows you to fill in sort of snow, allows you to change how much it covers, allows you to change if it's been raining which will turn it into sort of an ice, um, as you can see, then if we go to full it will make it completely damp and make it just wet and I also meant to say guitar of it which I might uh, might show, I might not, because uh, you guys should already know how to do it from previous video. So basically, I'm going to show you how to do that today. So if I come over to my material over here. I've made a base material that I showed in tessellation, and we're going to start doing the stages. And the first stage I'm going to show, because I'm going to split this into two videos. First stage I'm going to show is filling in the actual cobblestone. In the actual crevices, we're going to fill that in with snow, and then the snow comes all the way to the top where it fills the whole thing white. So, let's show you how to do that today. First step we're going to need to do is we're going to have to get a map for actually making this. And the kind of map we want is we want a map that basically has it so it's going to be dark in the gaps and light on the surface. Um, I'm going to use my albedo, you might need to make a custom map for this, you might even need to paint it yourself but I'm going to use my actual albedo because when when made black and white this actually works fine so if that's what I'm going to want to do is contrast this and the reason I'm going to contrast is because we're going to want to make it go like that and we're also going to want to change the contrast to about minus 0.2 the reason we want this is because we want it to be, as you can see, sort of, we want it to be a bit closer in its gradient. So we want it to be contrasted less. There you go. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put this on the add. Then we're going to make a one constant here, call this convert to parameter, and call this amount of snow. Multiply this by two. Just so we can go between a sort of zero and one value without having to change a lot. Two. Hold O left click and get a, a minus one value, and then we're going to want to add this together. And this will make it so when I turn this up, it will start adding a black value. And the reason I did this was just basically to make it easier because if I didn't put the minus one value, I'd have to go between minus one and one in our constant, where it's a bit, it just looks nicer going between zero and one when you're editing it in the instance. So next, we're going to want to multiply. So if we can move this back. Ooh. And we're going to want to multiply by our texture contrast. So you can have this as a separate parameter. I'm just going to keep it free. And what this does, it will sort of basically contrast the snow. Um, the problem with not doing this is sort of the snow, it sort of doesn't contrast enough it doesn't look like it's sort of specking it looks like it's sort of just fading in so that just makes it look a bit nicer then we're going to want to clamp this and that should be fine then all we want to do is we're going to start lapping this between these so connect the clamp to here and we want to make one for each pretty much we want to make one for uh, roughness one for our albedo and all to B value, so if I connect them up now, B value, B value, alpha, and down here, Oop. down here, I'm going to connect it up if you're away, I'm going to make you B value as well, um, to here, and we just want to get the clamp and attach it to all the alphas. If I stop messing up, there we go. So let's move that back a bit and let's make some room here for later. So all of that's set up. Now what we need to do is we need to make the values for snow. So on A value we want it to be 1 because snow is white and one value will be white. Connect that to our base colour. We want it, we, snow is sort of not very shiny so we want it to be about 0.8. We want it to be, we want it to have no normals. So I put a hold free and left click to get a, a free constant. Then we want the blue value to be one. You can do that either by doing that or just dragging it up here. Connect that in. Make sure to connect them all in afterwards. I can't tell you the amount of times I've not done that. 
and we want it to be the same. We want it to bump out to the max rock height, so we can make it four. Oops, four. Four, there you go. And then we want to connect that up to our world displacement. Now, if I start editing it, that should all be working. And it won't do anything between the small values of about 0.6. There you go, it will start already start filling it up. So if I make that 0.4, it shouldn't affect it about 0.4 and the more I turn that up the more you should start seeing it fill up the areas there you go it's filling up a little bit and then the more like I said it'll fill up more and that's the first stage done so we click apply and I've already made a material instance to do that right click and just say create material instance I'll delete the one I I'll delete the one I just made actually because I already had one um, drag them on if they're not already on jump into them and basically if I bring that over here we can start I can start sort of showing you that it works oh so I done one mistake there which you guys might do by mistake basically what I need to do is when I lap this I need to make sure I have a multiply and I connect up the vertex normal to the value here so click apply now it should be working fine so it's a small mistake that you guys could do and I did myself just then and I turn it down and up and that should be working fine thank you very much for watching um, stay tuned for the second episode where I show you how to do this more advanced where it covers just the top and you can put rain on it again thank you very much for watching and bye bye